Initially I was going to do a run featuring around the Crashman mod that a bunch of people have told me about. Unfortunately though, as of recording this video, the mod has been taken down for one reason or another. So rather than record a video that centres around the idea of me beating the game as fast as possible, I am instead flipping it as today I begrudgingly find out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas while over encumbered? Anyone who's played a Bethesda game knows exactly what I'm talking about, but for the couple of you that don't, basically I'm going to exceed my in-game carry weight, which will in turn inflict three major penalties. They are no jumping, no fast travel without a specific perk, and biggest drawback of all, no running. Meaning I will have to literally walk across the desert with no great way to speed it up until I hit level 12. This should be interesting, so now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. There are two simple ways to go over your max carry weight, which are either by grabbing enough objects in game, or by using console commands to lower your max weight to 1, so you will always be over encumbered no matter what. Both methods are fine and can be achieved before leaving Doc Mitchell's house, if for some reason any of you decide this is something you want to do. Trust me, it isn't, but I'm getting ahead of myself, let's focus on my character. For my specials I went with a focus on strength and intelligence, drained all points from charisma, and then made sure to increase agility and endurance to 6, as I need them to be this high for two perks that will speed up the run, but more on that later. Strength probably seems counterintuitive given the nature of the run, but I wanted it to be high enough so I have the strength requirements for some heavier firearms, as well as being able to do good damage with melee weapons, should I be rushed by someone wielding one. For my tag skills I go with survival, medicine and guns. Survival didn't really need to be tagged, but I will want it to be at 45 by the time I hit level 4 to get the travel light perk, and this just seems like the best way to go about it. Finally for traits, I take skilled and Logan's loophole. An increase to skills is always nice, and let's be honest, I highly doubt I'll be anywhere near level 30 by the time this runs over, so may as well squeeze some extra juice out of the drugs that I happen to come across. Getting past the creation process and I can step out into the open world and see just what we're dealing with this time around. Naturally, I want as much experience as possible, so taking part in the Ghost Town gunfight quest seemed like a good idea. And with that, I was off to the saloon to meet Sonny, and the overall speed is certainly... something. Kill me. Kill me. Finally, make my way inside, I speak with smiles, and then it's another casual walk out the back door to shoot some bottles and cobs to get the quest started the right way. While I painstakingly walk over to meet Ringu, I will say one major advantage of this run is I am not restricted in my use of weapons and armour, so getting kitted out is going to be a major goal of the run. If I can't avoid damage due to my lack of speed, then I may as well make sure that I can tank it. Making it to Ringu and we have a brief chat before it's back to Sunny Smiles. I'm already regretting this and I have yet to leave Good Springs, so that's great. When I manage to crawl my way back to her feet, I enlist her and Trudy's aid before strolling back to Ringu once more and getting to the action. Or I would say that, but given my snail's pace by the time I get within range, the battle is already over. I can't say that I'm too surprised at that outcome, so I think going forward I want to invest in some long range weapons like hunting rifles and repeaters, with my inevitable end game weapon being the anti-material rifle, either from the gunrunners or by taking it from the legion attacking the dam before the legate. Speaking of the end game, I might as well bring it up now, I will be siding with Yes Man this time around. I know people don't like it when you side with the funny robot because it's too quick and easy, uh, counterpoint to that, have you seen my max run speed? Yeah, I think I'm entitled to the shortest quest line. Naturally, a lot of this run just includes me walking with not a whole lot going on, which means I don't have a lot to add during these segments in terms of commentary. To get an idea of how long this is taking, I have only just reached Prim, and not only is it dark in game, but by this stage I've been playing the game for a little over an hour. You may also be wondering why I'm going the intended route rather than just take the much quicker path I usually do through Black Mountain, and truthfully, it comes down to two previously mentioned factors. First off, I wanted the cowboy repeater hidden under the sheriff's bed, plus the whole wanting as much experience as fast as possible thing, and given the low level and damage output of the escaped convicts, this seemed like a pretty good place to start. The convicts aren't able to take many shots from the repeater, most going down in a single shot thanks to stealth. Investing in sneak may have been a good idea, but in the end I never bothered, mainly because I'm slow enough as is without goloming my way around the wasteland. With the last convict down for the count, I free Beagle and after a few minutes can catch up with him at the casino, and from there continue to the next part of the quest, finding a suitable sheriff for the town. Yeah, I ain't walking up to the Mojave Outpost or the NCRCF to then have to double back on myself. It's just not worth the time investment, so instead, the town should be protected by the rustiest sheriff in the west. It was onwards towards Nipton, but partway through my journey I stopped in to pay some of the last escaped convicts and jackal gang members a visit, and once the last of them was dealt with, I was able to reach level 4, increase my survival to 45, and take the travel light perk. This increases my overall speed by 10% if wearing light armour. 
They say every little helps, but in my current predicament, I honestly don't notice a difference, so I may have just wasted a perk. No loading back now, it's time for some unbridled ant slaughter as we cross the desert. I shelved the repeater for a bit to conserve its ammo and condition, which isn't really a big deal as my 10mm pistol is more than a match for the bugs. Shouldn't be surprised, the 10mm has always been a good weapon, from taking down mutated creatures and raiders to even spawns of the devil himself who jump scare you when you least expect it. I actually traded with Malcolm for once and got a decent number of rounds for the hunting rifle, so when I make it to Novak, I am definitely killing Manny Vargas for his. Swanick gets what he deserves, and as for Volpes and his men? Well, it was nothing that a few mortar strikes and the grenade rifle couldn't handle. Making my way downtown, walking slow, I ended up getting bombarded with explosives thanks to some vipers taking advantage of my inability to react to a situation. The repeater continues to do work and finish them off for me, but not before they force me to use some of my stem packs along with a doctor's bag, because like hell I'm going through this with broken legs on top of everything else. Once they're out of the way, I make a detour to Wolfhorn Ranch, mainly for supplies and chopper. Whether I use the weapon remains to be seen, but if nothing else, it being unique means it will fetch quite a nice price. Just like in Good Springs, I tried to help out with the scripted fight between the Legion soldiers and the traveling merchants, but once again I am too slow to get into the fight before things are wrapped up. On the bright side, I can still head down to the nearby Legion camp and fulfill my bloodlust there. Most of them are sleeping, which works for me, so I silently dispatch them and then free the powder gangers to complete the easiest quest in the game. I push on a bit further this way to take out some more Legion for their armor and weapons, which will be transformed into money once I reach Novak. Another positive of this run is that since I'm always over encumbered regardless of the situation, there is no reason for me not to grab every single thing in sight. My crimes against the Legion caught up with me shortly after, as still on my way to Novak, I was attacked by Legion assassins. The repeater was mostly useless against them, not that it would have mattered to be fair, as I only had a few bullets left for it. Fortunately, much like their brothers in Nipton, these soldiers are also weak to explosives, so a few point blank shots from the mercenary's grenade launcher sorted out the two betas of the group, and then I turned my 10mm pistol on the final assassin for an easy kill. From here it was fairly quiet until I reached Novak. I turned some of the aforementioned Legion armour into caps to get some healing supplies, along with some much needed turbo, which will come in very handy in just a bit. While I'm in town, I stock up on ammo at cliffs, and as it is night time, I also decide to stop in and help Boone with his quest as it's short and sweet. Or at least it would have been if Jeannie Mae didn't somehow crash the game on the way to her demise. Thankfully, it works how it's meant to the second time, and I can now bring Boone along for the ride. Except, I'm not going to. Using a companion isn't against the rules, and it would certainly make things easier, but Boone is likely to kill a man before I even see them, let alone reach them at my current speed, so at that point, I would basically just be watching him play the story for me. So he isn't too bored while I'm gone, I make sure to give him a promotion by increasing his work hours to 24 hours a day as I take out Manny for that hunting rifle that I mentioned before. Thanks to trading with Cliff along with being incredibly lucky searching any and all containers, I already have over 130 rounds for the hunting rifle, so unlike the repeater, I don't need to use it sparingly, plus it's in a much better condition, so it truly is better in every single way. With my business in Novak concluded, I followed the road north to Boulder City, as I've already followed the main quest up until this point, so I may as well see it through. Plus, Benny's lighter that I plan to rip from Jessup's cold dead hands helps in assassinating him without having to invest in speech. I come across the usual vipers along the way and even manage to snag myself another hunting rifle to repair my own with later, which is certainly welcome. I also grab the reinforced leather armour from the group leader, as it's probably the best set of light armour I'll get for the remainder of the run. I briefly considered crossing the desert towards the El Dorado substation, so I'd be able to fast travel to it later, assuming that I reach level 12 by then. I ended up deciding against it as it would just take too much unnecessary time to walk there and back now, as opposed to travelling later. I did stay here for a while to take out some of the fire-breathing ants though, as they are a pretty great source of experience given just how many of them there are. I do this until I reach level 6 and then put all of my points into barter, as the long haul perk that lets me fast travel while over encumbered requires a barter skill of 70, so I may as well get the requirement for that out of the way as fast as possible, plus it has the added bonus of better buying and selling prices, which is always welcome. As for my perk this level, I just went with toughness, as defense is going to be very important. Arriving at Boulder City, and I immediately off Private Kowalski. This isn't just for the haha funnies of me doing something to him every time I make it here, but rather he is isolated from the rest of the NCR here, and killing him doesn't feel the Boulder City showdown quest, and I want a set of NCR armor so that I can board the monorail. I know you don't need a disguise, you can just run past the guards and hop on board, but that's where the problem lies. Running. No way I'm doing that, and I don't feel like getting my armor and health damaged prematurely. Once inside, I just make my way for Jessup, and after I've positioned myself in the corner, I just use a mix of fine from the hip with a hunting rifle and 10mm pistol to finish the job. I grab everything that wasn't nailed down and ventured back outside to help the NCR deal with the last of the cans, or at least the ones in my current vicinity. With the quest complete, I took some time to head over to the 188 trading post so that I could get some ammo and calves from Alexander. I spent most of my money on ammo for the anti-material rifle as he had a decent amount and felt it makes sense to stock up now where I can. 
That said, as it's taking me as long as it is to travel to Mojave, by the time I get back, his stock will probably have refreshed. Things were fairly normal from here to Camp McCarran, just some fiends harassing the NCR, more looting, and of course, a random mercenary who fades into existence right before my very eyes. You know, New Vegas. Arriving at the tops and I put the lighter and note from Novak to good use persuading Swank, and after talking to Yes Man for a bit, can have Benny sent upstairs where I ambush him right as he exits the elevator. Hello. What in the goddamn? Revenge does wonders for the will to live, don't you think? Baby, this is not the place to go talking about that. <laughs> Goodbye. With Benny gone, it's time to meet the locals, so it was off to the rest of the casinos to make nice. First was the white gloves, because as mentioned before, their little dress canes are pretty pathetic at trying to stop you no matter what armor you're wearing. Plus, unlike the Omerders and Chairman, they seem more likely to flee after you injure them. The hunting rifle, 9mm submachine gun, and 10mm pistol got quite a lot of use here. The 10mm pistol especially just seemed to tear through them. Can't say I'm surprised, as other than their flimsy masks, they have zero protection. Mortimer didn't know what hit him, as I hid in the illustrious indoor bush to camouflage myself as I lined up the shot to make sure I removed his hat from his body. Not wanting to leave a job half finished, even if this is more than enough for Yes Man, I was still in the mood for harvesting experience ridden souls, so it was onto the dining area to let even more of my bullets find new homes. I could have gotten the experience from the Beyond the Beef quest by rescuing Ted, but I didn't, seemingly for no reason I might add. Well, no time like the present to take part in my favourite traditional part of a New Vegas run, walking into Gamora, this time literally I might add, and slaughtering every single person in a suit that even remotely gets in my way. I'm gonna- Alright, listen up you little radish munchers! This battle is about to become way too exciting to show our younger viewers! No! Instead, I will show you this soothing image until the fight is over. Sweet! Mother of five, you should see this! Cookies and mushrooms flying through the air like June bugs in a swamp! Woo! It appears to be over. Let's go back to the... Oh! That was entirely my bad! I misread the signals. I knew a guy named Joe. He misread the signals in a combat situation. Now he eats everything through a mechanical straw! Wait! Battle's over! Carry on! Now, at level 11, I was so close to my first goal of getting the long haul perk, and thankfully, the easiest way to get loads of experience in seconds is currently presenting itself right to me. I head on into the Lucky 38, and rather than go straight for the control room, I actually hand the chip over to House so I can get the experience from the first part of his quest, and then I head down into the basement and reset the router for maximum experience. Well, actually, if I wanted to get the most out of this, I would have brought a golf club, but I digress, house is dead, and I am less than 100 experience from leveling up. I will get the experience I need by marking a couple of locations on the map, so it was time to head for what was probably the most concerning part of the run, the Boomers, or more accurately, making it to Nels in one piece. There was almost no way for me to outrun the artillery strikes outside of getting flung by them in the right direction, but I am leaving nothing to chance, so I made a pit stop at the Old Mormon Fort to buy all the stim packs they had available. I still wasn't convinced it would be enough, so the New Vegas Clinic would be getting a visit from me as well, although not before marking the gun runners on the map, which was just enough experience to finally hit level 12. All my skill points went into guns for more damage, and then, of course, the perk I chose was long haul, so now I can fast travel to any area I've marked on the map. Walking to places like Red Rock, Nellis and the Hidden Bunker are still going to take forever, but at the very least, backtracking to get supplies is now exponentially easier. Seeing how I am at the gun runners, I also purchased the anti-material rifle now, along with all the ammo they had for it. This also didn't put a dent in my funds, as I just sold the numerous weapons and armor sets that I've been gathering from every single person up until this point. With the best weapon I personally wanted for the run now in my possession, it was time to buy 20 stim packs in the clinic, and then see about getting past the bombardment. It's only right to christen the anti-material rifle with a worthy kill, so I chose George to be that person. I don't usually like to leave in big unedited clips with no commentary, but I am making an exception here as I figured most of you want to see the walk into Nels uninterrupted, so here you go. Also, if you're wearing headphones, you may want to lower the volume.
As you can see, my turbo idea didn't exactly pan out. Although, to be fair, I definitely took the first one far too early. Easily the luckiest part of that whole thing was the fact that I somehow got blown into the corner of that house, which just so happens to be a safe spot from the artillery, as it's the way I normally go. As you can imagine, my armour is in ruins after that, and unfortunately, I don't have any way to repair it right now. Shocker, I'm not doing the boomer's questline. Why would I side with the people who fired god knows how many artillery shells at me? Pearl goes down easy enough to the hunting rifle, I then brought out the anti-material rifle for Raquel, and then took her armour for myself, as by this stage I wasn't even noticing the 10% running increase from the travel light perk, so from this point I just started taking whatever armour would give me the most protection. I took out the dock and then healed and put his patients out of their misery, before raiding the place and heading on my merry way, as I finally appreciate the fact that I can immediately fast travel to Camp McCarran, so that I may be at the cans in 20 minutes as opposed to 40. I dealt with the usual threats to my health on the trip to Red Rock, you know, fiends, cook cook and violet pack. The difference being, my current arsenal of weapons makes them barely worth mentioning, because if they didn't go down to the hunting rifle, then they surely did not survive the follow up with the anti-material rifle. Speaking of my rifles, I didn't really use them in the canyon. There's no point honestly, most of the head honchos are in one small room, so it was time to make use of a grenade launcher that I picked up during my time at Nellis. In the ensuing chaos and smoke, Papa Khan must have got battered around the house like nothing else, because when I was through with the final can and doing my rounds to loot, I found him by the door, even though I made sure he was sitting, when I began my assault. With the cans wiped out, all that was left was the Brotherhood, and to make use of my weapons, I was going to do this the old fashioned way. Which of course means I strut in with the anti-material rifle in hand, and start putting the armor piercing rounds I bought for this very occasion to good use. They honestly were not necessary, just normal rounds were more than enough to take down an Iger Paladin with two shots to the head. Their real downfall here came from the fact I leveled up once more, and was able to increase my science skill to a point where I could use a magazine to hack into their turrets, and therefore have them do most of the heavy lifting for me. As this is a legitimate way the game wants you to wipe them out, it doesn't take long for the turrets to clear out the entire first floor. All the while I make out like a bandit with countless amounts of power armour shoved somewhere in my pockets. The turrets aren't a thing on the lower levels, which is odd, you would think they would want as much protection as possible, given the fact there's a self-destruct terminal sitting out in the open. Scribe Ibsen, Harden, Elder McNamara and his two guards all came at me in the main room, but each one of them met a very similar end that resulted in a few deadly backflips. I made sure to grab the keycards and proceed to the machine. The grenade launcher gets to shine once more as it effortlessly takes out the scribes and initiates who couldn't react to my presence, despite the fact they must have heard the rifle shots coming from the rest of the bunker. Even better than Unstoppable Carnage, I was able to make another armour upgrade as my combat armour was on its last legs, and so I replaced it with the better recon armour instead. Everyone may be dead, but that doesn't stop me from wiping the bunker off the map for good, just to be as thorough as possible. All that's left now is to make my way for the substation, which isn't too taxing, as all I have to contend with are fire ants and another band of legion assassins. If I fought them off earlier with my considerably worse equipment, do I even need to go over how this encounter went? Time once more for the final battle, and thanks to my long range weaponry, I can actually chip in and take out the legion before the NCR and my Securitrons have all the fun. Inside the dam, I basically start using the rifle like a shotgun as the close quarters leave very little room for the Legion and NCR to manoeuvre. Something I've had to deal with for most of the run, so now it's their turn to suffer limited movement options. Approaching the Legates camp and this is where the fun begins as I finally bring out my secret weapon, that being explosive rounds combined with steady and psycho. Where I come from we call this overkill, because if it doesn't one shot the enemy, it'll definitely stun them long enough that a follow up kill shot is inevitable. The fight with Lanius was funny. Naturally, still under the effects of Steady and Psycho, I get into position to get a headshot on him from a distance where I'm out of his line of sight, so that I can make it a crit as well. It doesn't kill him, sadly, but it causes him to trigger the second phase of his fight, where he momentarily retreats to the entrance of the camp. Thing is, he's still currently programmed to talk with me at this stage, so whenever he closes the gap, he engages in dialogue, and once the exchange ends, I immediately just mash the right trigger to get the second shot off before he has time to react, resulting in a very quick and clean Leggett battle. I also did it fast enough that he doesn't get to call on the reinforcements, so all I had to deal with were the two guards, who go down to two shots each. All that leaves is Oliver, and if I can take out the Legate, I can definitely one shot the General. So, that finishes the game, proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas while being over encumbered. My words of wisdom this time are don't. Just. Don't. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like. If you're interested in more challenges, feel free to subscribe. Try one of these videos out every week. My name is Robert. Say, everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.